Hello children. So in our previous class, we have discussed about plant tissues. We know that plants are multicellular organisms and they have different parts. Right? They, they, they have different organs like the roots, stems, leaves, etc. We also discussed how these organs are formed. Organs are formed from different tissues. A tissue is a group of cells which is having similar structure and performing a particular function. So as plants are multicellular organisms, they will have millions of these tissues. There are two important types of tissues in plants which are meristematic and permanent. The meristematic tissues are also called as the dividing tissues. Right? So the meristematic tissues generally, the, their main purpose is division. Right? The cells are generally having thin cell walls and they'll have a prominent and easily visible nucleus as their main function is division. Depending upon the place where they are located, meristems are divided into apical, lateral and intercalary meristems. Apical meristems, uh, apex means the tip. So they are present at the tips of the stem as well as the root. They are responsible for the increase of in the length of the plant. So, apical meristems, uh, they increase the length of the root as well as the stem. Coming to the lateral meristems, it is also called as cambium and it is present between xylem and phloem. It is responsible for the lateral growth of the plant, which means sidewise growth of the plant. So, lateral meristems or cambium is responsible for the di di increase in diameter of the plant. Coming to intercalary meristems, they protect the plant from grazing herbivores and repair them whenever they are lost. They are present at the nodes and internodes of the plant. This is what we discussed about meristematic tissues. Coming to the next type of tissues in the plant, which are permanent tissues. Meristematic tissues, upon dividing, they gain maturity and they get a specific structure and function. Once they get the specific structure and function, this pro uh, they get differentiated and they stop, uh, they lose their division capacity. So, therefore, meristematic tissues upon maturity, they become permanent tissues. So, meristematic are dividing and they grow, whereas permanent tissues, uh, they, they are non-dividing tissues. Okay. So, matured means fully developed. Right. So, fully developed meristematic tissues are only called as permanent tissues. They lose their division capacity and they get proper structure and function. There are two main important permanent tissues. First one is the simple tissues, whereas second one is the complex permanent. The simple permanent tissues are very simple in structure and all the cells are similar to each other. They all together work and they work for a common function. Right? Simple tissues are majorly classified into supportive tissues and protective tissues. There are three types of supportive tissues, namely parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma. What are these tissues? Parenchyma is a type of supportive tissue which fills the entire plant. So, it is called as a filler tissue. Whereas, cholenchyma offers structural support to the plant. So, therefore, you can call it as a supporter. Sclerenchyma contains dead cells and pro uh, protects the plant from external influence. Coming to the protective tissue, young plants are fully covered by a single layer of cells called epidermis which are flat and they don't have any intercellular spaces between them. They are like a cover covering for the whole plant. But in case of, uh, if, if, if you are getting a doubt, uh, if the plant is fully covered, how does the gaseous exchange and water vapor happens? Water vapor exchange happens? Yes, the epidermis has uh, some pores occasionally on the leaves and stem etc. These pores are called as stomata. Stomata are controlled by the two kidney shaped or bean shaped cells called guard cells. These guard cells control the opening and closing of stomata and in turn control the gaseous exchange and the exchange of water vapor. Now coming to the stem, only young stems have epidermis. Do adult stems also have epidermal layer? No. Upon growth, the stems of the plant, they generally start becoming woody. 
so a new layer of periderm is is formed periderm is also a combination of cork and bark bark is the outer woody layer that you see in the trunks of the stem under the bark you see soft brown colored part which is the cork right both of both the cork and bark are composed of dead cells and made up of suberin which is a water resistant uh, pigment right so they are very tightly arranged they don't have any intercellular spaces their main function is protection right so protective tissues include epidermis and uh, periderms coming to the next com next part which is complex permanent tissues complex permanent tissues uh, yes before talking about the complex permanent tissues let me also remind you about the simple permanent tissues the simple permanent tissues generally uh, the supportive ones uh, including the parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma are the most important parts of the plant they are present in all the parts of the plant and have different different functions first of all talking about parenchyma parenchyma is generally uh, it is a filler tissue it is present all over the plant it generally contains cells which are oval cylindrical or uh, or polygonal in shape right if you observe the cells they have spaces between them and they have a prominent nucleus they also have vacuole which can store food in some plants it performs photosynthesis and parent that parenchyma is called chlorenchyma in some plants like lotus it helps in floating and is called as erenchyma it is present in all the parts like roots flower stem leaf etc collenchyma cells are oval or polygonal and uh, they contain cellulose and pectin depositions in the corners and they offer structural support to the plant it offers elasticity to the young plants and leaves also they are seen in the stems midribs veins of the leaves etc sclerenchyma includes dead cells and their cell walls are deposited with lignin deposition they are very hard and seen uh, in two different types which are fibers and sclerites sclerites can be seen in the nuts nuts shells stems midribs etc fibers can be seen in the case of coconut husk hemp cotton fibers etc now talking about the complex permanent tissues see some tissues uh, are in plants which do not have same structure cells of these tissues have different different structures but they commonly perform a single function examples include xylem and phloem xylem is having four different types of components which we'll discuss in detail but all these cells of xylem perform one single function which is transportation of water coming to the phloem phloem is also made up of four different components but still phloem performs a common function of transportation of food to all throughout the plant body talking about xylem xylem is made up of four different components which are xylem vessels tracheids fibers and xylem parenchyma first let's discuss about xylem tracheids tracheids are long narrow cells with tapered ends the ends will be narrow when compared to the uh, middle part generally the middle part will be wider they'll have empty space in between and they will have some lignin depositions in between okay so they'll occasionally have openings also which are called as pits on the side walls so uh, tracheids are nothing but long narrow tapered end containing parts of the xylem the yes its main important function is transportation of water and water always gets transported only in one direction that is from roots to shoot or the stem right next these tracheids are uh, in pteridophytes and ferns and gymnosperms tracheids are the most important thing in transportation of water coming to the next part it is vessels xylem vessels are generally little wider when compared to tracheids vessels are short tube like structures 
a xylem vessel is formed when such short tubes are arranged in the form of a line and be together form a long tube like structure this long tube made up of small small vessels is called as xylem vessel right this the small vessels will be joined in series to form a long tube coming to the xylem fibers xylem fibers generally provide strength to the xylem tissue they are generally made up of sclerenchyma that's why they will be very strong okay all together the xylem fiber vessels and tracheids all the three are dead tissues xylem fibers main important function is to provide structural support and also strength to the xylem tissue okay and the only living component in the entire xylem vessels is sorry in the entire xylem tissue is xylem parenchyma xylem parenchyma is generally the only living tissue present in xylem it is present near near the parts other parts like the near the tracheids vessels and fibers it will have cytoplasm it will have nucleus also right the xylem parenchyma's most important function is to store certain food materials cell wall of this xylem parenchyma will be generally thin it generally stores food in the form of a reserve source like starch and fat all together all the xylem members they will be transporting water in one direction from root to shoot phloem and xylem together are called as vascular bundles or vascular tissues or conducting tissues right now coming to phloem phloem generally contains different parts like phloem parenchyma fibers sieve tubes and uh, phloem fibers companion cells right now first we'll talk about sieve elements sieve cell, sieve tubes or sieve cells right so coming to the sieve tubes these are long tube like structures with sieve plates sieve plates are also called as sieve cells which will contain holes or pores if at all you remember your how kitchen sink you will imagine you can understand how uh, what, what duty is performed by the sieve of the sink it filters the food in the same way sieves uh, they will filter the transported food in phloem next in a in a sieve tube there will not be any nucleus but cytoplasm is present all the members of phloem are uh, they are living cells okay whereas in xylem all are dead except xylem parenchyma okay next so this is a sieve tube and sieve tube will occasionally have sieve cells which act as filters right now here you can see how water is getting transported to xylem that is only in one direction from down to top okay now let's also see how food gets transported uh, via means through phloem right see in phloem side uh, you can see one more thing i want to mention between xylem and phloem you can see this white tubes which is cambium right so in phloem direction of transport will be in both the ways upwards and downwards also right so i hope everyone understood about the parenchyma cholenchyma sclerenchyma and then xylem and phloem as well so once again to remember parenchyma has thin cells it will have intercellular spaces contains chlorenchyma which performs photosynthesis cholenchyma structural support cellulose pectin deposition sclerenchyma dead tissues lignin deposition sclerides and fibers will be there okay next coming to the last important point about xylem before talking about xylem let me talk about cambium we already discussed that lateral meristematic tissue is present between the xylem and phloem right the xylem and phloem is called vascular bundle now if the meristematic tissue is present between this vascular bundle you can call it as vascular cambium right the cambium present between the vascular bundle is vascular cambium which is nothing but lateral meristematic tissue now observe this black line which is lateral meristematic tissue okay the brown colored one is xylem and red one is phloem every year new xylem tissue will be added to the 
added by the lateral meristems okay from the black ring new xylem will be added now during spring season this activity will be more so you can see a light ring here okay this light ring indicates new xylem being formed from lateral meristematic tissue now in autumn season what happens as everything tree leaves everything they shed from the trees and the activity of lateral meristematic tissue decreases and less xylem is released a less xylem anedit it, it is denoted by a dark line for every year how many spring and autumns you will get only one right so one year ayindan manake ela telustundi one spring and one autumn one light ring and one dark ring ochundali so here one light ring one plus one dark ring in, indicates a total one year right so scientists generally determine the age of the trees by counting these circles right counting these rings how these rings are formed these rings are nothing but the newly formed xylem tissues light ring indicates the xylem which is formed in the spring season which is more mostly generated adi dark ring indicates the xylem which is formed during autumn season when activity is less takku xylem release avutundi takku xylem release ayinappudu dark ring form avutundi ekku xylem release ayinappudu light ring form avutundi if 